Have you ever wanted to take the audio melody that you've recorded into, say, Tape It or your Voice Memos app and then transcribe it into MIDI, into something that you can edit in your digital audio workstation? Mm -hmm. Well, you can do this quite easily in Studio One, which is what this video is about. Now, what you're about to see is an older video that I recorded for a composition for songwriters course that I created years ago that never actually went live. But I think that the concepts are still relevant and maybe helpful for songwriters today. And by the way, as of this recording, Studio One version seven is the current version of Studio One, and it's gotten much better since this video was made. But again, the content is still relevant, so I figured I would go ahead and share it. Now keep in mind that in the video, I, number one, look younger. Number two, um, I also maybe make reference to in last module or in the next module or something. You might hear me say some references to the course itself uh, of which this video is a part. But um, again, I'm just kind of sharing them piecemeal. I'm finding them. Uh, I think this was actually recorded before the other two videos that I've shown already in this sequence. So bear that in mind. They're not being shared in the most perfect order uh, in terms of the timeline, but it's okay. I don't really care. Um, so anyway, without further ado, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. In this video, we're going to talk about melody. I haven't really talked about melody in the introductory module or so far in this module, so I wanted to get a brief introduction, and I wanted to do that before we talk about another really cool Studio One feature that you can use uh, to kind of extract your melody from an audio file, which is pretty cool. So um, I have here, just to start off, the seventh edition of the Harvard Dictionary of Music. Now, the definition of melody in this Harvard Dictionary of Music goes on for like three pages. There's a lot you could say about melody, but in the first little part of it, it basically just states, in the most general sense, melody is a coherent succession of pitches, right? So we know what pitch is because we talked about that in the introductory module, but essentially it's one note after the other horizontally, uh, as opposed to vertically, which would imply chords, uh, or if, if they're not literal chords spelled in thirds, you know, sometimes people refer to those uh, just notes that occur at the same time vertically as vertical simultaneities. That's a really big academic sounding term. But the point is, is that melody is just a, a horizontal succession of pitches. Now, melody is really important. And I wanted to share with you a quote from my teacher's teacher. <laughs> Uh, in graduate school, I studied with Don Grantham, Donald Grantham, who is, he's rather well known in the band world. So he, he's written a lot of different kinds of music, but for, for, you know, for one reason or another, he has just written a lot of music for wind ensemble, you know, wind symphony, these, these winds, brass, and percussion ensembles. Uh, and so he's really no, well known in that world. And uh, he studied for a summer with Nadia Boulanger. And Nadia Boulanger is probably the most famous pedagogue in the 20th century for music composition. Um, she, and I'm looking at her Wikipedia here because I couldn't remember who all had studied with her. There is a huge list of very famous people who have studied with her. But among the most famous are Aaron Copland, Elliot Carter, uh, Philip Glass. So these are really big names in the you know 20th century composer world. So uh, my professor, Don Grantham, studied with her for a summer in, in Paris. And the one thing he said to me that stuck out that I remember from my lessons with him is what Boulanger said is, never underestimate the importance of the line. In other words, the melody, the success, you know, the horizontal succession of pitches. Um, uh, but I want to share with you a quick Studio One feature to help us to extract the MIDI from an audio file. So if you sing your melody into your microphone and then you want to work with that melody in MIDI just to kind of develop it a little bit, kind of maybe come up with some new ideas or perhaps take little chunks of your melody and take that and put it into the strings part or the brass part or whatever. It gives us a way to kind of pull that that information out of an audio file and then play with it. So let's go back here to Studio One. We're back here actually in the same project that we've been working on this entire time. Um, and 
what I've done is I, I, I we've got some kind of chopped up parts here of our melody at the uh, at the top here the the top track. But what I did is I found this little part where I sang a melodic thing, you know, uh, right here. Let me just play it for you. Da 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 da. That sounds a lot like something. I, I said that I made it up on the spot, but it must be subconsciously something else that I've heard recently or been thinking about. But it does sound like somebody else's music. I don't know whose it is, but anyway, we're going to use it. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. So in Studio One, you actually have Melodyne Essential. Uh, Melodyne, pardon me, let me just get rid of this little red dot here. Melodyne is a separate third party piece of software. Uh, that Studio One, Personas, the, the company that makes Studio One, has partnered with to include in their software. So in most other DAWs, if you're using Logic or Cubase or whatever, if you want to use Melodyne, you've got to buy it as a separate plugin. Uh, but Studio One has included the essential version in their software, which is pretty cool. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, you you know, I'm going to have you record your own just a little melody. It doesn't have to be long. It just needs to be a little um, one measure, two measures worth of melody. As you can see here, uh, if I zoom in a bit, mine is roughly, you know, two, two and a half measures long. I held out this last note a bit long. So uh, there's 14, 15, 16, and then at the middle of 16 is where the note kind of cuts off more or less. So, uh, you know, roughly two measures. It doesn't have to be that long. I'm actually just gonna do this whole little chunk, this whole uh, area right here. Actually, let me just never mind. I'm gonna I'm gonna isolate this. Let me isolate. So all I'm doing is I'm going over here to the end of this part and I'm dragging. Okay, I don't know why it's not letting me drag. There we go. I'm gonna drag the ends of the region so that just that little melody that I sang is exposed. So here we go. So you can do that again by just going to the end. You get that little hash with the two arrows on either side. You can drag, you can click and drag the region so that you've got just the part that you want to that you want to edit. So I'm actually there's a couple ways you can do this. Uh, you can hit Command M on your computer keyboard, and I believe on Windows that's Control M. Um, but I'm actually just to make it easier for everyone, I'm going to right click on the region. I'm going to hit Edit with Melodyne, and then it's going to open down here a little window that looks pretty different from the rest of Studio One, and that's because it's Melodyne basically acting as a plug-in to your, to your software. So what I see here is Melodyne's uh, approximation, they, you know, Melodyne has analyzed the pitches, and it gives me the, the names of the pitches. This is a B-flat, more or less, uh, D3. And I'm not going to go into all the details of what you can do with Melodyne. You can basically use Melodyne to adjust the pitches and make, make sure that what you've sung is actually in tune. You can change the level of the pitches. You can change the key. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. But for our purposes today, all I want to do is show you what it's doing to our information here. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a little bit of a bigger view here. Um, so I just made this bigger. You can drag it down this way. I used a keyboard shortcut. But as you can see, uh, their Melodyne has put what looks like MIDI notes underneath our melody. So we now have a little MIDI representation, kind of, of our music. But that's not MIDI. That's not actual MIDI yet. Let's do this. Let's add a new track. We're going to make it an instrument track, as we made before, something that can read MIDI, right? And, uh, you know, we can actually add the instrument we want to put on there if you want. So, uh, let's see, input, instrument. I'm just going to hit OK for now because actually I'm not sure what these sampler instruments are. What I'm going to do is I'll go to over here to my drop down and I'm going to find presence and I'm just going to add it to this. Now I'm going to get rid of this for a second. So we have presence on this track. Now all I'm going to do, let me just make this smaller so that it's actually visible. So here's my melody right here. I'm literally just going to take this 
and drag it down to the instrument track. And boom, look at that. It made some MIDI for us. So these are exactly aligned with what we sang into the microphone. Um, now if I grab, let me mute this original track and let me grab an instrument to put on presence really fast. Uh, hold on, let me just click the little keyboard, open this up and I'm gonna just grab uh, piano, acoustic piano, Atmo, I guess atmosphere. This is gonna sound really funny, but let's try it. <laughs> okay, that's that's probably a little too atmospheric. Let me just grab ballad, just, just a regular piano sound, and let's play it again. Now those are not exactly the pitches that I sang. Uh, I would need to go in here and kind of change those a little bit. We would go down to the, the MIDI piano roll editor uh, to change this around a bit. Uh, oh gosh, my little keyboard shortcuts are not working. Okay, after some technical difficulties, I was able to get myself zoomed into the MIDI track. So as you can see, again, we had the MIDI up here and then down here in the MIDI edit or piano roll editor area, I was able to pull up the MIDI that I just recorded. So I just wanted to quickly change what's there so you can see how I would change this, right? So, cause obviously, as I said, this is not exactly what I sang. So sometimes you'll do this, you'll record something in and then Studio One will not, or Melodyne or whatever, if you're using another DAW that has something similar, it may not get exactly right what you what you sang, so you may need to go in and tweak it. So let's listen to it one more time, and then I'll change some notes so that it's exactly what I sang, okay? Okay, so obviously, so let's listen back to my original really quick. Let's actually solo this. Da 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 da. Now, obviously, what I'm saying is not exactly in tune, so that's okay. Um, but I believe that we can do a better job down here with our MIDI. So again, we'll go back down here. Uh, sounds like. Oh, hang on. Let me go back to. So this note sounds like, sounds right. Now I'm I can select a note with my mouse, and then I can use my right and left arrow keys. to just keep to play through the whole thing. So let's go back to the beginning. Beginning sounds right. This note, this note sounds like the right one. Da, da, wrong note, right? So I'm gonna use the down arrow on my keyboard to change the note, because it doesn't sound right that way. Let's see if that sounds right. That's right. That sounds right. doesn't quite sound right. So it sounds like it's a little too low. So I'm going to go down to that note, push, push the up arrow on my keyboard. Okay, I think that sounds right. So let's play it one more time. Hey, oh, there it is. Brilliant. So that's all I have for you right now. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.